In this lesson, we'll dissect the basic color wheel, learning about its three parts. All right, great. So now that we're familiar with both additive and subtractive color models, uh, what would any color course be without the inclusion of the color wheel? Uh, you see them all over the place, and you may have done a little bit of research into color wheels and seen a variety of different color wheels out there, not really understanding, well, why does this color wheel look different than this color wheel? Well, uh, we learned a little bit of the reasoning behind that in the previous lesson. As a matter of fact, I've got two color wheels here in front of me, and they look a little bit different. Now, there are some common colors on these two color wheels. If I go ahead and hide that, you can see we've got the same colors. We've got the yellow over here, yellow over here, orange and orange, red and red, and so on. But Really, you know, we learned about subtractive and additive color, and both of those two color models are going to have their own separate color wheel. So, um, in the last lesson, we focused primarily on what's referred to as the primary colors in each of those color models. Let me go ahead and show you here. I'll just bring on the primary colors here. There we go. Let's take a look at subtractive first. So um, remembering from the previous lesson, subtractive uh, used cyan, magenta, and yellow here as the primary colors and mix them together. Remember, in subtractive, we began with white and ended up creating black, mixing just these three primary colors. Well, there's more colors than just three on this color wheel. Why is that? Well, uh, because obviously, we have relationships between each of these colors. And uh, it, we learned in the previous lesson that if we were to mix, say, oh, let's say yellow and blue, we could get green. Or rather, cyan and yellow, we'd get green. And if we mixed yellow and magenta, we'd get red. Well, these three colors that we're mixing together here um, are creating what's known as a secondary color. So uh, let me just go and bring those in here. You can see here uh, in the subtractive color model, we have our secondary colors listed here. And we can achieve each one of those by mixing equal parts of the two primary colors on either side of it. So we still have some additional slots in this color wheel. Let's go ahead and bring in yet a third type of color for this particular example. We'll look at tertiary colors. So uh, a tertiary color is created by mixing the primary color and secondary color on either side of it. So um, you can see there's twice as many tertiary colors here. We've got six on this particular color wheel. Now the additive color model uses a color wheel that looks very, very similar like we saw. And it also, I've got it set up here to show us both primary, the red, green, and blue, the secondary colors, cyan, magenta, and yellow. And we've also got tertiary colors with the additive color wheel as well. So I'll go ahead and bring those in. Uh, and you can see here that, again, same concept works. There's a relationship between each one of these colors. So uh, if we were to mix, say, this yellow and this red together, we're going to arrive at this color, assuming we mix equal parts. Now, if we don't mix equal parts, let's say we mixed more yellow into the red than, or yellow in than we had red, then we'd end up with probably a color that would come in right about here in this slice. So are there more colors than we see on these color wheels? <laughs> Absolutely. I think that should go without saying. As a matter of fact, most softwares that you deal with uh, won't have a color wheel like this. They're going to have, um, if they use a wheel format for selecting color, then you're going to end up with probably a color wheel that looks something like this right here. Which essentially, if we take a look at this, we see all the same colors, but we've just got a smooth transition between them, which is creating so many more colors. So again, this is going to be our subtractive color model only in gradiated form, you can see here. So um, now again, a lot of, of softwares don't use a, a, a color wheel style uh, s widget to select colors, but a lot of softwares, depending on what industry you're planning on going into, will use a 
color wheel. So uh, in this lesson, we've learned about the basic color wheels. We learned that there's three basic components being the uh, primary, the secondary, and tertiary colors on the color wheel. And uh, we've learned that all color wheels aren't created equal. 